I have. I actually met Andy at the Oscars a few months ago. At the, I did. I'm serious. <laughs> Even I've not been invited. So. I mean, I, I'm not being funny. I mean, I know it's. A Welcome to Couch Surfing, the show where splendid guests look back at their big roles, their little roles, and everything in between. I'm here with the great Martin Freeman. Martin, how you doing? I'm very well. Let's Thank see what's you. on TV. You ready? Yeah, I'm always ready. Always ready. Oh, that looks painful. He's an angry bloke. Yeah, he is. Well, this was a documentary I made about 20 years ago, so... A documentary about the health service. Yeah, me and a friend tried to rob like a warehouse. Mm -hmm. We ended up going through a glass roof and ending up dangling upside down. Painful. It was painful. Even the filming of it, we were sort of hanging upside down for about 15 minutes. Have you ever hung upside down 15 minutes? The blood goes to your head. I heard. Yeah. I've never done that before, but I'll Why? try it this evening. Why haven't you? I haven't lived. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> Any story about the blood that I need to know about? Do you remember? I guess it's a sugary substance, mm -hmm. sugary sort of jammy. So I've got to say, that pool of blood on the floor was excellent there. That was really, really realistic. Pretty it good. looked fantastic. Oh. But yeah, generally it's that sort of sticky, mm -hmm. sugary thing. Sticky, yeah. sugary. Yeah, but it's not the same iron content as in real blood. No. You know when blood smells of iron? Mm -hmm. yeah. Metallic. I'm actually getting... Right now. Oh, I thought you were going to say Let's turned move on, on to okay. the next yeah. clip, shall we? Yeah. Before I vomit. Mm. <laughs> we love this love I do know this classic. Sing it with me. Love is free and the freeway is long. I got some hot love on the hot love highway. Going home because my baby is gone. When we did the read through of this episode, uh -huh. it made this, when Ricky got his guitar out and started to actually sing it around the read through table, it was one of the funniest things I have ever <laughs> seen. I was helpless. <laughs> it was a really joyful memory doing this. How did you get through this? I mean, how many takes of this oh, moment lot. had to be shot? A lot. I, I mean, actually, I'm not sure of this moment, mm -hmm. maybe not that many, but you, but a lot. Of, when people used to say, how do you, how do you get through these, this show when it was first on? The answer was, we mostly don't get through it. <laughs> you know, so the, the takes you end up with are the few takes that were usable. Who was great first? It, he was terrible. <laughs> Ricky was t absolutely terrible <laughs> because, um, I think he saw it as a badge of honor that if you, if you weren't laughing, then he wasn't doing his job. So if you weren't corpsing and ruining a scene, then he wasn't happy. I had to sort of remind him several times, this is your show. <laughs> what? We've got to finish this by six. We're not going to finish it. Time is um, money. He was obsessed with just um, being a child who made people laugh. And some people did think for a couple of episodes in, they thought it was a documentary really? about an annoying man in a paper merchant's um, hmm. because we weren't famous. Then when it became, no, it, wasn't, it wasn't a documentary, it was um, a comedy, the people who liked it loved it. And that was clear from the outset, you know, that, that it had a, a fan base of people who were truly dedicated to it. All right, you enjoying yourself? No. Neither am I. You ready Good. to keep surfing? <laughs> uh, if we must. It's an old friend of mine. Oh, this. <laughs> uh, this multi award winning I'm extravaganza. Okay, so Benedict Cumberbatch's fans are called the Cumber Bitches. Mm -hmm. What are your fans called? Some of them call themselves the Free Maniacs. Free Maniacs? Yeah. I like that. I was going to go with freebies, but I like freebies. I'll just leave. Do taxis come in here? Do cabs come in here? Because now's the time to hail a cab. I'm going to. This was the first episode of Sherlock. This was indeed. Yeah. Good save, thank you. Thanks, Wednesday. Circling you're back. Welcome. That's why you're a pro. Yep. He's very good. What was he like to work with? I mean, he's brilliant. He's, mm -hmm. a really good, he's a really good actor. He's perfect casting for Sherlock Holmes. I think he's the Sherlock Holmes of our generation. He's kind of the. He's the epitome of that cast mm -hmm. thing, I think. You know, he's really good. There's been talk of a fifth season. Is that happening? I don't know. I mean, there's always time. There's always quite a lot of time between each, between each time we get together. Um, and at the moment, it does feel a little bit like we're on a bit of a hiatus. It does feel like that. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the last season, it, you know, just the writing led you to think, oh, this is the, the last we're going to see of it for a while, I think. Yeah. <laughs> All right, 
Up next. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now this, have you yes. heard of this? I've heard of this. Yeah. Give me your best precious. Oh my God, terrible. That's not bad. That would be uh, that would be about as good as mine. Mine's, okay. I can't do it. I, I once on. tried to. Uh, me and Andy Circus, who plays Gollum, we would we were asked in an interview to do. Obviously, he can do it. He's very good at doing Gollum. Right. I'm awful at doing Gollum. It just sounds like a sort of foghorn. It's pathetic. Your first time working with Andy Circus, right? This was my first time. Okay, yeah. but certainly not your last. No. you were in a small indie film together <laughs> so was, yeah, earlier we this year. <laughs> true, very true. No, this was the first time I'd worked with him, and as well as playing Gollum, he was uh, the second unit director on The Hobbit as well. So he was, he was in New Zealand for a very long time uh, down there as well, uh, being a brilliant actor and a brilliant budding director. Oh, yeah. Yes. Cool, there you go. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come yeah, come on. Oh, that was nice. Far from it, he was very man. nice, and he st and he still looks great. Yes, he does. Really, really. Aged very well. He's a fine-looking man. Okay, so this was a, quite the pub crawl. Yes, this mm -hmm. was uh, Edgar Wright and Simon Pegg's script of *The World's End*, directed by Edgar, uh, and there were f a sort of main core cast of five of us mm -hmm. fellas who decide, in a very um, ill-advised way, to try and relive a drunken pub call crawl from our teens with disastrous. But hilarious consequences. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. And you literally lose your mind. I do. There we go. There it goes. There we go. Yeah, I remember when I got to that bit in the script, it was, um, I thought, oh, that's fun. That'd mm -hmm. be fun. And you bleed blue. <laughs> I do. I'm really a blue blood. And that's what happens when Pierce Brosnan gets angry. Okay, but obviously I have to ask you, any drunken yeah. shenanigans off camera? Not at all. What on that? Uh -huh. Not at all. Well, you what? Know, you know what it's like. No, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I know, I was being kind. Um, you have to um, be concentrated, you have to be sober, you know. So acting drunk okay, is one so thing. Okay, so the rap but party. Were... Did I... That's a good question. I'm not sure I went to the rap party. I'm... Maybe you did and you just don't remember. That's true. Yeah, That's two true. bars was, in, you were good... gone. There was, there would have been a rap party. There... I didn't go, I didn't go. What? I think I may, by that stage, the rap party may have been I've been going back to New Zealand for the massive smash hit success, The Hobbit. I can't remember. I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember. I can't remember. Do you remember this? Wow. This now, how did a scene. big star like you find yourself in this small, <laughs> low budget? Just, I was doing them a favour, I guess. Indie yeah. flick. <laughs> I decided to take a chance on a, a, on a guy. Now, yeah, it was okay. amazing. And this, this scene was. Um, uh, uh, this was a lot of work. This was a lot of work for, you know, imagine just all the choreography of getting it, the camera choreography, the amount of background, the stunts were incredible. Um, it's amazing. I know Very we've impressive. read that this is obviously one of the biggest films of all time. Mm -hmm. Walking into this project, did you have any idea it would be such a colossal success? I think you can't to the, to the extent that it has been, but mm -hmm. we knew, A, it's a Marvel superhero film, mm -hmm. so that has got its own cachet, and so that that's that part of it looked after because Marvel know what they're doing, right? And also that you know, for the obvious nature of what it is, people were hungry for it. You know, there were a lot of people who were dying to see it. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, it's not often that people come up to you and say, oh, I've, "I've seen this film seven times." You know, I've my mum, my dad, my you know, so that's rare in yeah. itself. You know, that's. As well as being a very good film, it also is. A, it feels like a bit of a moment, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. yeah, the definition of a cultural phenomenon. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. yeah, I guess so, and it's all down to me. That's the weird thing. <laughs> yeah. This is a great scene because the um, the effects that happen, the the sort of spooky, ghostly effects that happen, were live in the room, and they were actually happening before my very eyes, and it was. Um, it was great. It was really, really good fun. This is that one of the happiest two weeks of my life, actually. Really? Genuinely, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, and that's that's the audience reaction we like. Okay, so you can come again. How many times will that happen? <laughs> <laughs> you need to know. I need to know. Right, okay, yeah. Because I don't do well in scary films. So I know I a few know. people who don't do well in scary films, and that, yeah, this was not an easy watch for them. Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's um. It's a very, I think it's a very smart, mm -hmm. intelligent, character-driven horror film that is um, 
genuinely quite disturbing at times, yeah. Which do you find actually more difficult, comedy or a psychological thriller? I mean, it's always about the quality of the writing. Mm -hmm. um, I don't find either, I mean, if I say I don't find either of them difficult, that implies that I think <laughs> I'm good at everything. I don't think that. Well, that's a testament to your range as well. Well, thanks. Yeah, yeah may, well, yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe, but yeah, it's very fortunate. Yeah, play, I play English very well. <laughs> I do. I do. You do? Yeah. You're but really from the Bronx, aren't you? Texas. But, Texas. Um, yeah, but, but, but this is not easy to maintain. <laughs> it's not been easy to maintain a straight face with you <laughs> at all. But thank you so much for stopping by, Martin. That's it. It's lovely to meet you. Couch time's over. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Ghost Stories is in theaters now. See you next week on Couch Surfing.